Hey everybody, thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be doing a video on a rifle that is basically viewer supported. Uh, I got this rifle on loan to the channel from some really good friends, but also supporters of the channel. And I surely do appreciate it. We are going to be talking about this right here. This is the M76 Valmet. And let me tell you, this rifle, whew, this rifle is a very interesting rifle. Not only is it highly collectible, but uh, it is got a really interesting history as well. Before we get into talking about everything going on with this rifle, I need to take a second to say thank you to the people who are making this video happen. My friends Fitzy and Angel of Verdun, I really do appreciate your guys' uh, support of not only the channel and everything that I'm doing, but also this video and allowing me to um, take this rifle to the range and shoot it. Uh, like I said, this is a collector's piece, so being able to do something like this means an awful lot to me personally, and I really do appreciate your guys' support and friendship as well. Okay, so let's get into this. Uh, this rifle is the service rifle to the Finnish army. Uh, so when I say that, I mean Finland, if you guys don't already know. Uh, this started as the M64 rifle that was chambered in 762 by 39 It was eventually uh, imported into the United States in the late 60s. And it didn't really capture a lot of people's interest for a couple of different reasons. Number one, it was chambered in 762 by 39 And individuals who were around at that time really didn't know anything about that cartridge, number one. Number two, if they did know anything about that cartridge, they knew that it was being used in the AK-47 and the SKSs. And you'll know from history, we were involved in a conflict in Southeast Asia where we were fighting individuals who were using that round. So it was seen as a kami round or something like that. Move forward to um, 1976. The M76 was then adopted. Um, it was also offered in 762 by 39, but also 556 is which, what we have right here. Another little nuance thing too, as you can see, this has a wood buttstock. We're gonna talk about that uh, here in just a second, but it didn't start that way. So keep that in mind as well. As you can see, this does have a very close resemblance to the Galil, and there is a very specific reason behind that. How did this rifle get adopted? by the Finland army. Well, uh, Finland has a very close relationship with Russia, at least they did in the 1960s. And they saw that uh, they needed to upgrade or uh, introduce a new rifle to their army. They took a look at the AK-47. They saw how useful and utilitarian that rifle was. So they decided to go ahead and pull together their own variation of it. If you were to take the internals out of this rifle, you will see that it is extremely similar to the AK-47, but Finland went a little bit into a different direction and that's where you can see this is a little bit different. So let's talk about this. We'll go from tip to butt as GT likes to do it and talk about everything going on. Here at the end of the barrel, you're going to have this really interesting three-prong flash hider that is pinned in place and has a bayonet lug right here. And let me tell you, this bayonet, before we get into the rifle, we gotta talk about everything going on with this bayonet because it is, this thing is lethal, let me tell you. This is the sharpest bayonet that I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, it makes the M9 bayonet for the M16 look like a butter knife. And uh, it is not only meant to be a knife, but also to attach here at the end of the rifle and do some serious damage. I mean, just look at that thing. Whew. 
So needless to say, in true Finnish fashion, they not only have this lethal bayonet, but they have this sheath that is made out of reindeer hide. So <laughs> that's another little interesting nuance uh, as well. You have your standard uh, chrome line, cold hammer forged barrel here uh, that has the combo front sight gas block, uh, vented gas tube here with proprietary uh, polymer hand guards on here as well. The uh, interesting thing about uh, these hand guards is they were first imported into the United States with uh, lightning cuts in them. So they look like kind of cheese graters, really. And then they switched to these standard hand guards to give a little bit more surface area, something a little bit more comfortable for people to grab, grab onto in uh, the mid 60s adding these three lightning cuts on the top to help with uh, heat dispersion as well. Moving back, let's talk about the receiver. The receiver is very Galil-like. Um, naturally, this rifle is going to be the predecessor of the Galil. Uh, once Finland pulled this into service, the Israelis started looking at it and decided that they wanted to mimic uh, this rifle, and that's exactly what they did, which is why you have this upswept cut in the uh, receiver here. Uh, your magazine release has a shroud around it integrated with the trigger guard, very much like Galil. The sights are going to be very similar to a Galil as well. So the biggest difference is a Galil is going to be a milled receiver. This is stamped. So that is one of the major differences there. Let's talk about the sights here real quick. Uh, you have a hooded front sight that is uh, non-adjustable. I believe. Uh, I think you can adjust it uh, for windage, but all of your adjustments going to be made back here on the uh, rear sight. There's been no adjustments needed for this rifle as it is. One of the interesting quirks to this is that you can flip this rear sight over on itself and you have a notched rear sight with a um, tritium filled high vis front sight giving you some really cool integrated night sights as well. So uh, that is an interesting touch. One of the things that Finland wanted to do with their version of the AK was move the sights from uh, the rear sight block on a standard AK back here on the dust cover. This dust cover is locked into place so you don't have to worry about losing zero or the sights rattling or anything like that. So that was another improvement that the Finland, the Finnish military did on this rifle as well. Okay, the operating system on this is going to be very similar to that of an AK. You have a safety lever here. You press down just like an AK. You're going to charge this rifle just like an AK uh, and then place it on safe. Uh, and you would then carry it around in this configuration. Um, naturally, just like a Galil, you're going to be able to remove the magazine kind of with that shimmy aspect. So if you uh, can get your index finger on here, you can press forward, shimmy this magazine, and it will fall free while you are inserting a new mag. The pistol grip on here is going to be very similar to that of an AK or AKM, but uh, it is going to be thicker. So while it looks somewhat similar, it is actually going to be a little bit beefier as well. The trigger shoe here is a little flatter than what you would find on its AK predecessor, but uh, it feels pretty much the same as what you would expect from an AK. Naturally, you are going to have your standard take up on that trigger. Um, just a little bit of a take up, maybe a millimeter, then it starts creeping and creep, 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 creep. And then finally it will break over there. And then just like a standard AK, you'll reset all the way back out front and then creep, 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 and breaks over again. So very similar there. Um, not that, not very different from an AK at all. 
Finally, let's move back and talk about the buttstock here. Uh, this is actually really interesting. When they first imported these valve mats into the United States, it actually had a tubular crutch style stock on this. Michiko talks about this on his channel. He dives into the history far better than I can with this rifle uh, and uh, discusses everything going on with it. But realistically, the major reason why this does not have the same tubular crutch style stock on it is because at the time, late 60s, early 70s, we were involved in the Vietnam conflict. A lot of people at that time did not like the idea of an, an assault rifle. An assault rifle was kind of seen as, you know, kind of bad because of that conflict in Vietnam. So what they did in the early, mid, and late 70s as they were importing these rifles, they took the tubular style stock off, put this wood stock on and uh, started selling them that way. Gained a little bit uh, more popularity and uh, there you have it. So that's kind of a little bit of the history and everything going on with this rifle. It has been a lot of fun to shoot um, and the history behind it has been extremely interesting as well. One of the other interesting nuances about this particular rifle is here on the left side of the receiver you're going to have this beer keg proof stamp on the side of it and what that does is that indicates that this rifle was meant for uh, either the Indonesian Coast Guard or maybe the Coast Guard for Singapore. I'm not sure. I've heard it one of both ways, but either way, it was meant for the Coast Guard as a government contract for one of those two countries. And um, unfortunately for Valmet, they backed out of that contract for whatever reason. So they were stuck with these rifles. They decided why not just import them into the United States, sell them to the American market, and there you go. So there is kind of a down and dirty overview of everything going on with this rifle. Um, as mentioned before with the sheath on the bayonet, the, uh, the sheath is made from reindeer hide and so is the sling. The sling is made from reindeer hide as well. Uh, that just seems odd to me, uh, but I'm sure that they're just as common there as whitetail deer is here. So whatever. But again... A lot of fun to shoot, was able to get this to the range a couple of times, allowed Clayco 47 to shoot this as well, and he was just beside himself for being able to shoot one of these. So uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Really interesting rifle, a lot of history going on with this. You can see where uh, the Israelis pulled a lot of their influence from in this rifle and how the Finns pulled a lot of influence out of the AK-47 as well. So sound off in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of the Valmet? Is this something that you guys would want to try to find for yourself? Or is there a different 5.56 AK, AK variant that you would rather have? Let me know. Sound off in the comment section down below. I also want to take a second to say, if you guys haven't already signed up for the Fit and Fire newsletter, I have pulled together a weekly email that gives you a ton of information, not only on the videos that I'm doing, but also some great deals on ammo, um, some really cool deals on just standard, you know, gun guy type of stuff, and then training across the United States as well. If you guys are interested in signing up or getting some training, I'll have a list of instructors that I've either trained with myself or have been uh, looking forward to train with in the future. So sign up on uh, my homepage of fitandfire.com, best way to do that, and uh, get in on the uh, giveaways. I do one every month. We're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thank you again so much to Angel Verdun and Fitzy for allowing me to uh, shoot this rifle and uh, bring this video to you guys been a lot of fun and uh, it's been really interesting as well. As always, take care of yourself. Freedom through strength. We'll catch you guys later. Take care guys. Bye.